Episode 11, with certified personal trainer, lifestyle and fitness YouTuber, and intuitive eating enthusiast, Josie Mai. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me on what I know will be another amazing episode. I am your host, Chase Tuning, and this is Ever Forward Radio. I'm here with a friend of mine, Miss Josie Mai. Josie, say hey. Hey, everybody. So Josie is here in D.C. with myself. Her and I kind of like play play tag a little bit as far as like in cities that we're in. So we <laughs> met back in Richmond when I was there, mm-hmm. and you were going to school nearby. You were at JMU, right? I was at JMU, yeah. Was Actually, that at the same the time? time? Yeah, I was still in JMU. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we met there, mm-hmm. and then we kind of both migrated towards Northern Virginia, mm-hmm. and now we're both in in D.C. We're not one of those people who say, hey, I live in D.C. I actually live in Alexandria. Yeah. We both live here in the city. Uh, It's funny. We have kind of migrated. Yeah. Both live in Arlington, and we both moved around to D.C. Yeah. Yeah. And we're falling to that round, and we keep ending up getting acai bowls. (laughs) We both have the same affinity for uh, uh, South Block acai bowls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we actually just came from there, a little place here (laughs) nearby me called uh, Union Market. Got acai bowl and some coffee, and now we're... All hopped up on Mountain Dew. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to talk for a couple hours. Yeah, just a few. Just a few hours, (laughs) guys. So uh, (laughs) for those who don't know who Josie is, give us a quick little intro, who you are, what you do, what makes you tick. Sure. So my name is Josie Mai. I have a fitness and kind of lifestyle. It used to be mainly fitness, but now I've kind of melded into the whole balanced lifestyle theme. Um, Instagram, which is at Josie B. Mai, and also a YouTube channel. Same tag, Josie B. Mai. um, M-A-I. Yeah, MAI. Um, but pretty much, I'm just a everyday kind of gal. I work the usual, like, 8 to 5. I'm um, not a fitness competitor or any type of fitness model. I just like to share my love of fitness mm-hmm. and show how it's connected into my everyday life. And um, I can go more into my whole history, but I am pretty much known for on my Instagram and YouTube channel for my my transformation story. So I yeah. went through a series of, I want to get fit. How do I do that? Um, made the wrong choices kind of and going on a very extreme diet, had that rebound into an unhealthy relationship with food and my body. Um, I didn't appreciate my body enough. So I went through kind of a series of different levels of eating disorders. You could say went first from anorexia from that into orthorexia, so obsessed with healthy or clean yeah, eating. Yeah. And then from there, my body was just kind of like, can't take it anymore. So mm-hmm. it rebounded into binge eating disorder. And from all those together, I definitely had a toll on my body and it affected me for a few years. And, you know, no one's ever fully cured from eating disorders. It, it's always something that lingers in the background. Sure. So I do talk about that a lot on my Instagram and YouTube channel. But now I've finally, you know, worked on myself and worked on my habits and my just rebuilding that relationship with food and my own love for myself. So yeah. self-love is a big other topic. And um, I found a way to have intuitive eating as a big um, point in my post as well. I, I I wasn't really aware of that until, or I wasn't really aware that it had a name or title yeah. until you, really. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, describe a little more about the intuitive eating aspect. It's pretty much what you would say as common <laughs> sense eating. Um, a lot of people are like, what does intuitive eating really mean and what are the rules of it? And there are no rules. Mm-hmm. It's sort of eat what you want, when you want, mm-hmm. but not... This diet sounds great so far. But not like, <laughs> oh, I want all the cookies. I'm going to eat a whole box of cookies. It's more like I'm craving a cookie. Before, in my um, more restricted phase, I would be like, no, I can't have the cookie because it's unhealthy. Mm-hmm. Um, In my binge eating phase, I'd be like, yes, I'm going to eat the cookie now because I'm going to say no later, so I should just eat them all now before I start my diet. But now with intuitive eating, it's more, I want that cookie, I'm Mm going to have the cookie, and then craving's gone because I listen to my body. It's also about listening to your body on like the fullness scale, on a scale of 1 to 10, how full are you or how hungry are you? And it's also not abiding to the rules of, it's lunchtime, I should eat. Mm -hmm. It's more like... It's 11 o'clock, not really lunchtime, but if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat now. Yeah. If it's 2, I'm going to eat now. Also, I'm not restricted by the rules of when I should be hungry. Or for me, it's just like, oh, look, it's a time. Yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Team it's really, always hungry. It's really listening to your body and just being aware of if you're actually hungry or not and, and eating to your yeah. like 
Intu- intuition. Paying attention to your yeah. paying attention to your intuition, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So, kind of going back to what you were talking about in the beginning, mm-hmm. um, which I'm sure would resonate with a lot of people who listen to this podcast or you know who follow fitness YouTube people or Instagram accounts or anything like that. Getting started. So mm-hmm. you were getting started, getting used to this you know whole fit life, trying to you know work out, exercise, yeah. you know better yourself, become healthy, whatever that meant to you. Mm-hmm. And through that, like we all do. Like you realize it's not just what I do in the gym, it's, you know, what I'm eating as well. So yeah. how did that kind of come together and turn into, um, you said you first struggled with anorexia Yeah. because of your, uh, your lifestyle? It was because of an extreme diet that I followed. Okay. So I had picked up a book and I'm not going to say the <clears> book <throat> name. I don't want to give it any bad rep, but basically it tells you what to eat and how to work out. And it was sort of a low carb diet. So by reading this book, I, it taught me kind of the wrong thing saying carbs are bad mm-hmm. uh never eat white rice never eat white breads all, all of that so that was sure we've all heard my mind. a lot yeah. before yeah yeah everyone says like carbs are bad fat is bad like what else can you eat if that's really true yeah but because of that i thought that i couldn't eat certain foods mm-hmm. so and the diet itself was very restrictive and it turned out to be around 700 calories a day wow and on top of on top of working exercise. out so wow. like the workouts would be like an hour and sometimes I would go longer, like two hours a day. And then I would also just eat like around 700 calories a day. And mm-hmm. I would count on my fitness pal. And then from there, it was a two-week diet. After the two weeks ended, there was no follow-up plan. There was no, this is how you maintain it for so life. So it's just day one through 21, and then that's it. You're done. You're on your own? Yeah. Wow. It, like, it like tells you like w- the guideline of now you're on your way. Now you've mm-hmm. reached your goal. But there's no set like what else because you've been okay. doing this for two weeks You've been following the plan, and now, like, what else do I do? Yeah, then you most likely would just go back to whatever you were doing exactly. before, right? Exactly. You yeah. just, like, start eating the normal foods again and then get back to what you were before the diet. But I didn't want to do that because I was like, no, I like how I am now. Or Actually, that's false because I still had a bad image with my body because I think, especially with social media nowadays, um, back when I did this diet, I was a freshman in college, so we're bombarded by social media, Instagram, Tumblr was a big thing back then, magazines, TV. Or even just that phase of your life, everything. that new, your, yeah. your social norms yeah. are totally different probably than what you were used to, you know, back at home and yeah. around your family. So now you're stepping out on your own, mm-hmm. making new friends, going to class, like literally yeah. adulting for the yeah. first time. So you have a lot more uh, kind of environmental factors playing yeah. into you. And all those stated beauty is skinny. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you have to look a certain way to be beautiful. So I was definitely trying to get to that goal. I wanted to be one, like one digit body fat, all that stuff or a certain weight. And so in order to maintain that, I decided to keep sticking with the 700 or less calories. And so even after that, me. that 21 day diet yeah. was over, you mm-hmm. stuck with that same routine. Yeah. I stuck with that for like the rest of the summer or the rest of the year. I kept sticking to 700 calories or less on top of working out. Pretty intense workouts with circuit training, so a lot of sweat, a lot of moving. How could you handle that on so few calories? Yeah, it was. What were the workouts like? Well, the workouts weren't planned by them. I kind of made the workouts okay. myself, but they were a lot of like you know squat jumps, um, some weightlifting, you know, ten pounds around mm-hmm. that, but a lot of high intensity, uh, like movements with strength training so yeah. jump squats you imagine burpees all that stuff so just a lot of up and down up and down so probably burning through close to your whole yeah, daily pretty caloric much. intake and so one day it finally hit me um my mom said she sat me down and she was like i think you need to like start eating or mm-hmm. start start doing less because she could see that whenever i walked up the stairs i would get very tired or very like fatigued or i couldn't even fold the laundry this is wow. actually what she talked to me because i was folding laundry with her and i was just looking very tired and weak and I was also very crabby yeah. and I was like snapping at everybody yeah. because I was probably hangry like <laughs> super hangry and so she just like said that and that kind of hit me because yeah. unfortunately it's also not just the environmental factors but also people around you can affect how you feel about yourself and your body and she didn't know at the mm-hmm. time but sometimes she would make comments and not to be my mom I love my mom but you know <laughs> she was like Oh, like, look at how your sister looks or look at how everybody, how someone else looks. Like, you should try to follow their steps or their diet or their workout. And she didn't say it to hurt me. She was just like, oh, so you're aware. Like, you could mm-hmm. do this, like, for your health and stuff. And so hearing that come from her 
before this diet, and then hearing her say this now that I should stop this diet yeah. kind of made me think, okay, maybe I need to get myself in check. And then from there, so this is like after the whole anorexia stage, that's when I was finally letting myself, okay, I should just let it go. Mm-hmm. And so that's when the binge eating came. And it's not so much overeating, because that's, people do overeat, but binge eating is a whole other like beast. Yes, it's, you went from like semi starving yourself or really, really yeah. restricting yourself, mm-hmm. um, letting that go. Uh-huh. And then, and you, so going from that to old habits, did that just kind of spin out of control a little bit and in, into like eating more, or are you trying to make, make up for all the lack of food you were I eating? Think or that's what it was how did that kind of evolve? It was like restricting so much, <clears throat> and then. I just like, I guess I let go and then my mind was just like, yay, you're finally mm-hmm. free, so eat all the things before you go on another diet. Because mm-hmm. it's like this um, this cycle. I also read about this. I'm in, uh, what's it called? Oh, it's a book. I have to, I'll have to tell you the name of it later. Yeah, okay. Mind over binge? Or binge? I'll, I'll tell you the name uh, of it. It sounds vaguely familiar. I think yeah. I remember you posting something about it a while back. Yeah. I'll definitely tell you the name of the book later, okay. but it tells, it tells a story of another woman who suffered from binge eating. And um, basically, it's a cycle of you want to control your life, let's say your diet. So you get on a restrictive diet, you lose control, so you start binge eating, mm-hmm. and then you try to cycle again. So mm-hmm. you want to get back on the diet again. And it's just an iterative cycle of you trying to control, you restrict, you binge eat, and you mm-hmm. try to control again. And it's over and over and over again. And so that's what my body kept doing. Like, I would binge eat, and then I would say, okay, I'm done with this. This week, I'm going to start fresh going to start new, going to eat clean, yeah. no more cookies, no more cake. And because of that restriction, it would just lead me to want to binge eat again. By binge eating, like explain that a little bit. By what exactly like, do you mean by binge? Just like <laughs> so some of my... Going over your macros or just like, no, like, like downing like, all, all the cookies like downing, all the time? Downing. Okay. So like I would, I'll be like, I can remember like one of the worst ones was I was like in my kitchen, I had a loaf of bread, cottage cheese and peanut butter, and I like killed it wow yeah it's crazy it's it's crazy it's like you don't even know what goes over you what comes over you yeah so a couple of things i'm hearing is that it sounds crazy to some people they're like how can you do that is, can't you just stop and you really don't yeah what's know. the the mental aspect behind that so it, it sounds like um you said like you know i was feeling out of control or yeah. like something triggered like i was thinking this mm-hmm. how does something that we're doing mm-hmm. stem from something that we're thinking especially when it comes to eating because yeah. you feel like hey i'm hungry i'm really hungry so i'm gonna eat all the food but mm-hmm. if you are if you're starting from a unhealthy point mentally yeah how is that different do you think i think or were you even aware of that at that point at the point i just actually that's a good point um at the time i just don't think i knew what was happening mm-hmm. Because now that I look back, I can say, oh, this happened because X, Y, Z. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of people say, oh, eating disorders are usually triggered from emotional reasons or family problems, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That's not always the case. Like, I can say for sure my binge eating started because I restricted too much. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I kept doing it in that cycle. That became a habit. Okay. And habits... I learned about this in The Power of Habit by mm-hmm. Charles Duhigg. Great book. It's, Great I book. I love that book. Yeah. And um, so it's just pretty much... The habit loop. Uh, it's a habit loop. Yeah. And even if you don't want to do it anymore and you know you don't want to do it anymore, and I knew I didn't want to binge it anymore because it was, you know, not a fun experience at all. Like, it was a momentary pleasure and then the whole cycle of The trigger, doubt, fear, reward. Uh, not doubt. Uh, regret yeah. and guilt and doing it again. But I know that was the reason that I kept doing it. So a lot of people are confused when they go through this. They're like, I don't have any emotional problems. Everyone's telling me that I do. Should I see like a therapist or someone? But just saying that's not the only reason. So definitely look outside of the whole, you're doing this because of your emotional problems or you're doing this because of your past. Mm -hmm. Look at the possibility of it being a habit that you can break out of if you have the right steps of breaking habits. Yeah, absolutely. That's something that uh, I recommend and have worked through a lot with my clients and patients is that like, okay, how do I stop going to eat the cookies or how do I stop yeah. going to the fridge so late? And they're stuck in a habit. They're like, it, I always tell them, or most of the time I'll tell them, hey, look at what you were doing or thinking yeah. immediately before that. Mm-hmm. And then what are you doing and thinking immediately after that's over? Because mm-hmm. most of the time you just do it passively. You're, yeah. you're engaged in this behavior that you don't even really realize you're not that conscious about because it just has become ingrained in you. This is what I do. This is what I do. Exactly. And so uh, how did you become aware of that and then how did you get out of kind of out of that habit loop? Um, definitely 
what you said is true. There are triggers. So whether it's having a certain food in your kitchen yeah. or feeling a certain way. So you kind of have to notice what those triggers are to the habit. So whether it's like sometimes if I was really sad or let down by somebody, mm-hmm. that could be a trigger. Or emotional I, response. Yeah, emotional yeah. response. So that part was emotional. But then that kind of grew into, oh, I'm just hungry. So mm-hmm. boom, going to eat that too. But so just like now make a new habit from that same trigger. So if I'm sad or mm-hmm. disappointed by somebody or have an emotional response, instead of going straight to the kitchen, I would go write a diary, listen to music, go outside, go to the mall, go shopping, do something else. And then soon, if you do that enough, that replaces the bad habit yeah, absolutely. and brings about a new one. So that's definitely one of the ways that can you know, redirect mm-hmm. your habit loop. Um, so you went from uh, anorexia, dealing with that, and the binge eating, so kind of eating disorders and disordered eating, yeah. and how did you kind of snap out of that yeah. secondary issue and then kind of just uh, get to where you are now? Yeah, so I know that um, when I was in like my darkest phase of binge eating, at one point I was just like, all right, I'm done. I'm just going to give up. Because before you had asked what the emotions were in my mind yeah. when I was doing like the binge eating, the act of it. And mm-hmm. it was mainly, okay, I messed up my diet today already. So I'm just going to do the, like mess up the rest of the day, have this whole cake and, or this box of cookies. And then I'll start again tomorrow. Yeah. The classic I already screwed up. So I might as well yeah. just wait and start first. Tomorrow. Classic. Yeah. Everyone does it. Which so. I'm sure no one has ever said before. Oh, right? my gosh. <laughs> but so after that point, I was just like, I'm going to stop trying to be healthy. Mm-hmm. That was my, so this is, you know, part also, one. it was like that extreme. So you're yeah. like, I can't do this. I messed up. So I'm just going to give up. I wanted entirely. to give up. Yeah, wow. okay. I definitely did. So I just, you know, I had, I went to Florida to visit my parents and I pretty much just gave up. I didn't work out anymore. I just wanted to, you know, enjoy my life. And I was like, you know, happy, happy tummy, happy life, happy <laughs> everything. So I would like eat all the food that my parents cooked for me and yeah. like that. And then after a while, what I noticed is that the more I let myself eat these foods I had off limits for these past years the more I ate like the temptation foods that I didn't allow myself before the less they became so Mm -hmm. tempting to me like the less forbidden fruit Mm -hmm. they were to me so I realized like I could one night just have one cookie and that was it or I could just have like one dish and I didn't want to go back for seconds or thirds so that was my big takeaway from that point of my life where if you let yourself have something and don't say no to it it's not so appealing to you anymore. Mm-hmm. Not even in that like the food world, right? Yeah. It's kind of the same carryover aspect. Yeah. So the more, I mean, it's human nature. The more we restrict ourselves on something or the more someone tells us we can't have something, yeah. we want it more. Exactly. Why? Yeah. Because the brains are really, really <laughs> weird. Because we're crazy. Weird things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. And then that's when I picked up the book, okay. Intuitive mm-hmm. Eating. Uh, the third edition, it's purple, the purple edition. I think that's the newest one. Okay. Um, they also have a great section on how to raise your children on intuitive eating, which really? I suggest for people who are okay. having families because mm-hmm. it's it definitely you know can stem from childhood how, mm-hmm. how your eating habits and everything. But a good read, a really good read, and that's how I learned about intuitive eating, listening to your hunger cues, knowing that you can have anything that you want, anything you're craving right now, you can have it as long as it's in moderate sizes. Mm-hmm. So that's where one of my like mottos is moderation, not deprivation. I like that. Because you can have you can have a cookie, you just have one. You don't have to have a whole box. You can have a piece of cake and you know, that's it. You don't have to have the whole shebang. And, and not even having it actually. I think what you said was um letting yourself know I'm kind of like expanding upon what you yeah. said. So it may not be verbatim, but uh telling yourself and letting yourself have what you want when you want it. So Mm -hmm. if you're telling yourself, hey, I have the freedom and range to eat what I want when I want, I have no restrictions, Mm -hmm. that's got to be such a huge pressure relief of always thinking in your head like, hey, I can't eat this. I'm restricted. Where am I? Mm -hmm. What are the foods around me? What can I eat later? So Mm -hmm. if you already just have that mental victory of I'm not restricted, Mm -hmm. I'm in control, then it's so much easier to walk into situations where you may have been tempted before uh, or something may quote unquote be good or bad for you maybe above your calories for the day or you, mm-hmm. whatever um, it, going in with that mental victory Definitely. probably makes things so much easier right yeah it really really does but before intuitive eating I did track macros for a summer mm-hmm. um, and this is after so this is I'm 
throwing this timeline all over the place. Bear with me. So let's Time's say, irrelevant. Yes. <laughs> this time does not exist. But so here's, um, imagine a, a line right in front of you on the left. That's when I gave up completely. Mm-hmm. Said no more to diets, to restrictions, to working out even, to trying. Um, then a few months in, I was like, no, I'm actually not happy. Mm-hmm. Like, I do want to look good. I want to feel good. I was feeling oily all the time because I was so full of nasty like grease and stuff. And I just felt like, yeah. So I, was, I have to do something, but I want to do it the right way this time. Right. And at this time, it was a big thing on Instagram and social media for macro counting. I I F Y M. If it fits your macros, yeah. If it fits yeah. your mouth, if it fits your macros. Yeah, pretty yes. much, yeah. So I learned that was a big like stepping stone to my recovery was learning that food is not all black and white. Mm-hmm. It's not healthy, unhealthy. It's more about, you know, the um, the amount and the macros that you're putting in. So mm-hmm. a cookie that has, let's say, like 20 carbs, 3 protein, and 3 fat is the same as another meal, let's mm-hmm. say, full of nutrient-dense things that are 20 carbs, yeah. 3 protein, and 3 fat. Nutrient density versus caloric density. Yeah. yeah. So I learned from this that there is no good and bad. There is no black and white. Like, I can have this food as long as it's within my, you know, calories mm-hmm. for the day. And it really made a difference knowing that I can have this cookie and not be like, oh, I messed up for the day, have the whole rest of the cookies. It was more like I had this cookie, it fit, Mm -hmm. now I'm going to move on with the rest of my day and just hit my other macros. Mm -hmm. So macro counting really taught me that food is not evil. If I have a quote unquote bad food, I've not messed up because I had one or two, but I didn't go overboard so I can still keep going. I think that's a big part of people kind of falling off the wagon. They think that if they had a piece of cake or a cookie or a pizza, then they're screwed and they messed up their whole diet. Now, that's not really true. So you can keep moving forward and ever forward on. Yeah. And, Shameless uh, plug. <laughs> yes. And just know that you haven't messed up your day. And I think that was a big um, learning point for me, knowing that I can have all the foods that I want, again, as yeah. long as it's in moderation. So I moved that piece of knowing that, that there's no good or bad in with the intuitive eating when I read the book. And that also just talked more about you shouldn't have the idea of food being bad or good. And, um, do you think there are good and bad foods? I think in terms of nutrient nutrients for okay. your body, there are, but I don't like to label it good or yeah. bad. Cause I'm with you. I'm cause that's yeah, kind yeah. of, again, messes with your mind. Like mm-hmm. I shouldn't be having this and that's why guilt yourself and say that, Oh, I shouldn't be having this, but I'm having it. It's kind of makes it taboo. It's like, you're not yeah. supposed to eat it. And yeah. I don't like that very much. Yeah. <laughs> Who likes to think that hard when you're trying to just eat a cookie? Yeah, yeah I just want a cookie because it tastes good. It's good for the soul. And then broccoli is good for the body because it has yeah. more nutrients, but you know. So that's a great point right there. So you may not have known or, I mean, maybe you did. You just didn't really think about it as much. Uh, you know, broccoli is good for the body mm-hmm. or, or cookie is good for the soul. Mm-hmm. So kind of transitioning through the eating disorders, mm-hmm. disordered eating, learning more about intuitive eating, if it fits your macros. Yeah. How did that help you kind of learn more about food? So instead of just focusing on this is my diet, this is the parameters of what I can and cannot eat, yeah. how did you kind of learn more about, uh, okay, this is actually good for my body, this is what it does for me. So would mm-hmm. you say that through that process you really kind of grew your knowledge about types of foods, what you're yeah. eating, so kind of just like... Definitely. You can definitely tell by what you eat, how you feel the next day or how you feel in a workout. So obviously if I ate a meal full of leafy greens versus a plate of cookies and milk, Mm -hmm. I would feel great when I'm eating cookies and milk. But then later on my workout, I might feel like, oh, I feel kind of bloated right now. (laughs) This is not a really good feeling. Whereas a salad makes you feel kind of better. So through that, it's definitely, you don't nail intuitive eating right away. You you might go overboard your first few weeks or even months of trying it, and then you kind of overboard on the um, good for the soul kind of foods is what I mean. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of realize, oh, I'm actually craving a salad or I'm craving some other kinds of foods than yeah. than these foods I've been eating in the past. And then the body will adjust absolutely. The body yeah. will adjust your taste buds. It knows um, what cravings. What's um what makes it feel stronger or faster or better? Or, you know, like not so because way health. down. Yeah, because health. Because, because health. hashtag health. <laughs> And I don't know, I guess I guess just over time, after after letting yourself eat the things that you crave and then realizing, oh, I'm not really craving these anymore because you're allowing yourself to eat it, so mm-hmm. that mental freedom, your body then goes to like an equilibrium where it's, yeah, I want this cookie, but I also do want a 
you know, big bowl of broccoli or green beans. Which I'm sure we all say all the time. And tofu and yeah. steak and chicken. Yeah. You know? I'm, I'm going to call out uh, my friend Tom. Mm-hmm. He despises broccoli, like, to every fiber of his being. So it's, like, kind of my life personal goal is mm-hmm. to get him to, like, broccoli. Just, like, pour some teriyaki sauce on it. There you go, Tom. Yeah. Boom. Well, maybe with him I'll have to, like, chop up some broccoli or uh, some bacon and uh, put some kind of, like, I'll have to trick him with meat. There you go. That's the way it is, heart. There yeah. you go. So you have best of both worlds. Right shout there. out Tom. Shout out Broccoli. <laughs> Vesuvius. That's Vesuvius, right? Yeah. I haven't seen him in a while. Hope he listens to this. <laughs> but I guess that's like the answer yeah. to that. Just kind of all, your body just knows mm-hmm. what it needs. So. Which is cliche, but. I mean, it does. It really does. Um, and you don't realize it at the time, but, you know, kind of having hindsight, you can definitely look back and these are the things I was eating and this is kind of like how I felt in my mental state versus yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Um, it really just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, I mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. So how do you think that transition in your life with exercise and eating correlated to maybe that phase or season of your life, what you're doing and everything else? So with school, now that you're a working professional, mm-hmm. um, have any of these lessons or kind of mental exercises in your focus and alterations with what you're eating, has that crossed over at all to kind of other areas of your life and habits and skill sets? Oh, definitely the habit adulting. part. Adult. Yeah. Does it help in adulting? Does it help in adulting? Um, yes. How will IIFYM help me adult better? <laughs> how, I can do math better. <laughs> Actually, no. I don't do all, math That was good. all my fitness pal that yeah. did the math. We're too heavy on uh, technology for mm-hmm. that. But I think the biggest point that I took <clears> away from it to that impacted my overall life, not just fitness related or even health related, it's just the power of habits. Yeah. That's what I really took away from this. Any kind of negative habit you have, whether it's related to food or maybe drug addiction or alcohol, alcoholism or any type of bad habit that you want to break, don't think that it's impossible because it definitely is possible to break that bad habit. And that could even be like other smaller habits, Mm -hmm. like forgetting to brush your teeth or something like that. But everything that you do in life is controllable. It's just how much work you're willing to put into it. Because like I said, it's not, you're not going to go into it and fully succeed the first time or the second time or the third time. Right. You have to keep going. Mm -hmm. You have to keep trying at it. And it takes many iterations to break a habit because how many, how many did it take you to get into the habit in the first place? Right. So Mm -hmm. that was a big takeaway point just for life lessons and any other habits in my life that I want to either get rid of or build. I need to start working towards it Mm -hmm. and that's working towards goals or anything else in your life that you want to change. So what are you currently working on? What are some of your goals right now? Are you, are you kind of like level in your your fit life mm-hmm. diet aspect? And, uh, you know, what are you kind of working yeah, on right now? So now I can say that I'm like just – I have a pretty set routine where I wake up in the mornings and I go, to, I go to the gym and then I go to work, come back home, and then I just relax and go to bed. And that's pretty much my work week and I'm pretty balanced in that. So mm-hmm. I'm doing well with my fitness. I'm doing well with food and my career and my social life. And that's all about the – balance right um but i think i want to one of my goals is actually to get back to youtube and instagram because i let that slack a little bit because i've just been transitioning into this whole well i can't even say that anymore since i've been a working professional for about a year and a half now but i was just so caught up in trying to transition with moving or with changing my career and just getting into the whole adulting phase that i've (laughs) i lost one of my passions, which was doing YouTube mm-hmm. and Instagram. So that's one of my goals to get back to that. And that's just me like getting off my butt and being like, okay, I'm going to edit a video tonight or I'm going to film something tonight or a recipe or a, or a Josie blabble and just do it. And that's one of my goals just yeah. to go forward with that and yeah. to find out what I really want to do with my life too. <laughs> that's also another one. That's a great one for adults. Yeah. We were kind of talking about what that earlier, doing? you know, so, um, without going into too much detail, I mean, you really, you enjoy what you're doing and you're a hard worker. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, how can we maybe stay committed and stay hard working on something that we may already know is not our end game, mm-hmm. but uh, like sticking to something definitely has benefits. It, you know, it teaches you discipline and the value of hard work. Um, mm-hmm. But how do we kind of know when to stay with what we're doing and when to kind of move on to the next thing? I think you definitely need to have a game plan before you mm-hmm. quit anything that you're currently working in. So, cause that's the problem with me. Sometimes I know like I have all these ideas and goals, mm-hmm. but I don't have a set game plan set out or like a, a, a path forward next steps. Mm-hmm. So I can always keep dreaming, but 
you have to just get to the doing part, and you have to. That includes writing out the pros and cons of leaving something and going to something else, or the next steps of building, let's say, a company if you want to start a company, mm-hmm. or building an awesome podcast if you're starting a new podcast part yeah. of your life, or it's just writing out the plan and actually putting those steps in motion. Everyone has the bigger goal. Like, I want to lose 10 pounds by X and Y, Z month. Or, I want to have my own company. And those are huge, you know, stretch goals. Yeah, but you also need to make those smaller goals. Like, the small weekly checkpoint goals. Or the smaller monthly checkpoint goals. And a lot of people forget that. So, they had this big dream, but they never have mm-hmm. set milestones to check in with themselves. And that's where dreams kind of fail. Because you're not doing it. You're just still dreaming. Mm-hmm. And so, I think that's a big part that I need to get to, too. Um of knowing when to quit something and when to start something else is actually setting out a game plan and putting it in action with baby steps first before I can make the giant leap. Yeah. It's funny. It reminds me of this, um, this analogy, my high school math teacher (laughs) used to tell us about, um, what it takes to get to your end destination, your goal. So mm-hmm. he, he, it was as basic as, he's like, Chase, go look at that door, like the door of the classroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you want to leave the room, right? You want to go through the door? I'm like, yeah. He's <laughs> like, well, what do you have to do in order to get through that door? What do you have to do just to get there first? He's like, you have to go at least halfway. I was like, okay, sure, technically. <laughs> yeah, you're right. He's <laughs> yeah. like, okay, walk halfway. Now, again, to leave the room, to get through that door, you have to walk from where you are to halfway and like he had me just keep doing half steps Mm -hmm. and to kind of just show you that it's not as easy as we may think it is or want it to be to just Mm -hmm. see a goal set a goal set a destination and just walk through that threshold yeah you have to do all these steps incrementally Mm -hmm. to get there and then each step along the way like me stopping halfway at the door halfway again halfway again it forces you to kind of pause where you are realize a I've come this far, but I still have this much further to go. Mm -hmm. Um, And then just keep setting those other smaller little goals in between. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And that's what you need to do to get anything done. Yeah. But a lot of people just stay stagnant because their dreams are too big or they haven't had those stepping points like that that you just described. Yeah, absolutely. Um, My my reference I've made before is uh, idling. Mm -hmm. I kind of talked about how a big reason why I moved up to DC from where I was and kind of how I, how and why I took a lot of steps in my life for the past couple years that I have, which is I realized I was so comfortable where I was Mm -hmm. and not that there's anything wrong with being comfortable. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed my life, but I realized that I was just comfortable and I wasn't pushing the envelope at all. And some people are okay with that, but me, like I, I wanted to do more. I wanted to be more. Mm -hmm. And the person, um, the people that I wanted in my life, like I wanted them to kind of be those external motivators as well. And I just needed a different environment for that. And so, mm-hmm. uh, it just, I had to just get out of that comfort zone and just, you know, go halfway, go yeah. halfway. That's a good, that's <laughs> I don't know a good if one. I found the door yet, but I'm still, you know, yeah. crossing halfway a little bit more. Cause life is not meant to be comfortable sometimes. Yeah. You gotta fill it with some passion and some excitement and yeah. some ups and downs and it's full of roller coaster and turns and everything but if you really work through all those Mm -hmm. obstacles it's definitely worth it in the end yeah and good job that you pushed the envelope yeah thanks um (laughs) i don't know if i'm like still in the same envelope i feel like i've maybe grown into a new envelope maybe i'm in a box now maybe i'm in like a priority box nice maybe like a nice nice padded box with lots of little peanuts oh yeah yeah packing peanuts there you go so apparently i'm shipping myself somewhere (laughs) (laughs) he's shipping himself to the next door (laughs) doors and all the doors in dc yeah right i never have to cross the door if i just have uh ups oh, do it for me true. Yeah. or a amazon drone yeah seriously there coming soon yeah coming soon <laughs> you heard it here first yeah you never Actually, know is that a, is that a drone dropping off my package or just some youtuber spying on me yeah, yeah. it's a drone dropping off chase at your door <laughs> be ready <laughs> so we know um that you have a, a passion and a big interest in you know eating and balancing that with your lifestyle and your exercise so what is what's maybe something outside of the gym outside of uh eating that uh, we don't know about you. What, what are those other things you like to do? All of these things. Besides acai bowls, we know. <laughs> so acai yeah. bowls. I love, like, my passions just regularly in life. Yeah. You know, I was actually thinking. There's more to life than, uh, than, than fitness. fitness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking about, like, again, I was, I sat down by myself one day and I was like, what do I, what would I love to do? What mm-hmm. would I have a fun time doing? And I thought, you know, opening up my, it's, it is food related though, but uh, my own, like, cafe, mm. coffee shop. But with a theme, 
or not a theme, but like you would do smoothies, acai bowls, mm. coffee, and food, and then like a nice atmosphere. Okay. Because I've seen some places that are just coffee, and I'm like, eh, I mm-hmm. want something more. Or a place that's just a smoothie bar, I'm like, I want something more. Why not combine it all? Like, yeah, today we had to go to uh, <laughs> with the Union <laughs> Market, places. where it's like a huge, giant food court, more or less, mm-hmm. and we had to kind of bounce around to, to get the things that we wanted. Yeah. Oh, I was like, I just definitely do want to be my own businesswoman, mm-hmm. because my parents, ever since I was born, have always been their own bosses. They own their own thing. Okay, so kind of grew up in the entrepreneurial world. Yeah, yeah. so they Same. definitely are a big influencer of that. Like, I, I don't want to always be working for the man. I want mm-hmm. to be the man. So that's something that I want to figure out. But again, I don't know exactly what I want. Yeah. And that's okay if you don't have life figured out for all you it's people totally out there. It's totally fine. Yeah. We don't all have it figured out. We're just trucking through. Try first to uh, have some guidelines. Then you can mm-hmm. set those more stringent parameters yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, I grew up in the coffee house business. After Did you? after our dad got out of the military, mm-hmm. he started his own business, which was a coffee house. Huh. And then from there, it turned into four coffee houses and a steakhouse. What? Yeah. So uh, if you want to compare notes one day, yeah, if you ever get started with your uh, I never knew this Josie's smoothie slash cafe slash restaurant, <laughs> I can maybe help you out with the coffee aspect. <laughs> I, just, like, I should just do a vegan restaurant, and that's like the new trend nowadays. There's so many trends in social yeah. media, I can't keep track. It was first clean eating. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then it was if I fit your macros. Mm -hmm. Still a big thing. And then intuitive eating. Mm -hmm. And now it's like self-love, which is a great one. But, uh, and vegan things, which I love vegans too. They sometimes don't like me, but (laughs) I think vegan food is great. Good job. I always look at vegans. uh, I I appreciate them. I love them because that means there's that much more meat in the world. For me to eat, oh, yeah. I'm a carnivore. I, <laughs> yeah. No, no shame. I love, I love my chicken, no, I love yeah. my meat. Yeah. But there's a DC place. I'm not sure if anyone else listening to this is from DC. Probably a handful of you, but there's a place called Bourbon and Barrel, or no, Smokehouse yeah, yeah. Barrel on 18th Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, have vegan chicken wings. It's vegan, but it tastes real. Good. Like a like tofurkey. Maybe, but tofurky. it's on like a giant toothpick, so it looks like the bone. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, Fun fact. I definitely had some very good vegan food or even vegetarian food since being up here. Yeah. I'm all about food. If it just tastes good, I don't care if it's vegetables or yeah. meat or whatever. I used to be vegetarian. I tried it out for a summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't. I guess it doesn't really classify me as vegetarian, but I went meatless for a few months. Okay. And it was definitely not as bad as I thought because there are so many options. Yeah. And... That's a good point, too. You know, you bounce around from a couple different, quote unquote, diets Mm -hmm. um, or eating styles. So I think that's a big takeaway that, you know, try whatever you want. Yeah. Because I I tell so many of my friends and my clients that everybody is different. Literally, everybody is different. So what works for me may not work well for you or Mm -hmm. my body may respond differently. So you never know what your body is going to like, what you're going to like until you try it. Um, And just because something may sound less appealing or more appealing, I have found through just personal trial and error that it's not always the best determinant yeah um you know just on face value Mm -hmm. because what you read in a book what you see online Mm -hmm. like i said will work for this person or a group of people but uh i I think what you're doing is great what you've done is great is you know recognizing the cues paying attention to your body you Mm -hmm. know trying different things and uh and then eventually what happened you you found what worked. Yeah, found you're, what you're worked. Doing your I'm thing, balanced. Yeah. I mm-hmm. made it. I can finally say I made it. I remember putting up a quote on my Instagram, and it said, "I can finally say I made it." And I put my arms in that superhero <laughs> pose, that superwoman <laughs> pose. That's an improvement fact, by the way. If you if you stand in a superwoman or superman yeah. kind of pose, you feel stronger. Mm-hmm. So I do stand that in ten su- minutes. I stand in a superwoman pose every day. Superwoman. Yeah. Woman. Exactly. Oh yeah. There you go. Hey girl. <laughs> 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 but no, yeah. I'm, I'm just. I'm happy. I got. I got through yeah. it, and everybody can get through it too. If you're struggling through anything, mm-hmm. don't feel like you're alone because you're not. I think that's a big yeah. thing. Like when I there's always someone up. else going through yeah. something very, very similar, if not even the same thing, you know. And even though I felt like maybe I shouldn't talk about this, I shouldn't put it out there on YouTube, like for the for the world to see. Yeah. Like, should I be making this so public? And then I think like if I didn't go through this, would I be happier? You know, while it did suck going through all of this, it does make me happy that I've helped so many people by talking about it so openly. Because a lot of people were like, I'm going through the same thing. I felt so alone. I didn't know anyone else was going through this with me. But by listening to you, now I know that there's hope or I know what to do now Mm -hmm. or I can look into and research ways to get better. And I'm just really thankful for that. Yeah. I just had this opportunity to. 
help other people out. I think that's a big part yeah. of, you know. Helping, just, uh, pass, paying it forward. So mm-hmm. say there is one person listening right now mm-hmm. who is dealing with an eating disorder or disordered eating uh, or just trying to find what it is that works best for their body and, you know, wrap their head around it, get that mental aspect down as well. What would you say to them right now to try to change that, to help them through? Um, if Imagine you're talking to maybe like your prior self. What, what would yeah. be something you would say? I would say, all right, girl, put down the bread. Or guy. Or guy. <laughs> hey, you, put down whatever you're holding. <laughs> Breathe and just take a deep, deep breath and close your eyes. Imagine the day that you're finally free, like mm. free of it all. Like no more disordered eating, no more feeling guilty about what you did in the past, like the workout that you missed or the food that you ate. Just imagine feeling perfectly happy and free. Now keep hold of that feeling. And every time that you feel tempted to do this thing again, just try and regain that feeling. And that definitely like helps knock you out of about to like start that bad habit again. So I know that's helped me a few times when I was like, reaching into the fridge or reaching into the pantry, I would stop and think, no, mm-hmm. like if I don't do this, how will I feel? And if I do this, how will I feel? Yeah. And that's a great stopping point. And so just knowing that one thing, it's like, how happy would you be if you just fought the urge to continue this bad habit? And that's actually one of the ways to stop bad habits, I guess. And then just knowing that you, although it seems very dark and it seems like a alone time, I know for me it was, I didn't tell anybody about my, my problems while I was going through it, I was very much alone. I didn't tell my sister or my roommates or anything. I would just deal with it on my own. Burden. Yeah. Um, just know that you are not alone and there are many people out there who care about you. And although you might be scared of bringing it up to them, like your friends or your family, find someone that you can talk to. Even if that's me and you want to email me, I have my email address <laughs> out there and a few people have and I've responded to you guys. Yeah, it's a great resource. Yeah, and just have someone to talk to about it have someone to text while you're feeling a certain way. Have someone that you can go to for a big hug if you're feeling down. Like, just know that you're not alone, and just knowing that alone helps you get through all your tough times, you know? And and knowing that someone else has gone through it and hopefully successfully has gotten through it gives you a bit more hope because you can definitely get through it too, and don't feel like you're stuck because you're not stuck. You're not a tree. That's always the metaphor uh, that's yeah, used. Good. You're not a tree. You can always change something in your life or find resources in your life that will help you get to a better place. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. Major Josie bubble. Kind of blacked out. I <laughs> no, think. I love I it. Yeah. I'm you distracted can, by this the, view. I can see the cogs. I'm like trying to think. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, man. But just know that you can get through this. I believe in you. Shoot me an email if you need. Yeah, I'll link all of Josie's <laughs> contact information in the description below. Um, and so you mentioned YouTube, Instagram, where can listeners connect with you? Yeah. YouTube, all, Instagram. All just Josie Mai. All, all okay. Josie, mm-hmm. Josie V. Mai. Josie V. Mai. And then josievmai.contact at gmail.com. Okay. Easy. Very cool. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Yeah. Like Good to it. see you again. You too. All right, everybody. That's going to be a wrap for this week's episode. This was Everford Radio with Josie Mai. Woo. Bye, guys. <laughs> It's always great reconnecting with Josie. Anytime you see her, she just has the biggest smile on her face and seems like nothing could be wrong. But as we've heard through her story, she has had some peaks and valleys, especially when it comes to her eating habits. So if any of you have resonated with this message of disordered eating or even eating disorders, I hope that you learned what you needed to from her story so that you too may live a life ever forward.